Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to The Camera Adds 10 Pounds. I'm your host, Peter Sirs, and today I have a returning guest, another guest who's been on the podcast before. Very, very excited to have this young lady back from farming watermelons in Oklahoma, the 2008 Oklahoma State Division II MVP, along with Blake Griffin, heiress to the Pittman Watermelon <laughs> Empire, ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for my best friend, my girlfriend, everybody's favorite Oklahoman, besides Carrie Underwood, <laughs> Ashton Pittman. Yeah. <laughs> What's up, buddy? Hi, and it was 2007. Ah, damn it. Damn it, 2007. That's not a bad word. <laughs> damn, it's not a bad word. They say damn in the Bible. Okay. <laughs> you, you, you want, you want some, okay, so uh, Ashton has uh, an agreement that when she's on my podcast, I can't cuss. So, because she has people that will probably listen because she's on it, and they don't like it when I curse, so I will try my best. That's the agreement. Um, but I'm pretty sure damn is not a bad word. Okay. Yeah. Um, how you doing? Welcome back. Thank you. You're back from Oklahoma. How was that? It was good. Yeah? It's hot. Hot, yeah, super hot. Super hot, um, but it was good. It was fun. I always enjoy going home, especially to do the watermelons. So, uh -huh. Yeah, that was fun. Was it, uh, it was a slower year this year, though, because of the weather and stuff, yeah? Yes, it was actually a, it was actually a, um, I don't know, like a, one of the, one of the, um, I don't know, not so good years. Let's just put it that way. That's what I just said. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, it wasn't it wasn't a great year, but it was better than, um, than we initially anticipated. We initially anticipated it. Well, initially we anticipated it being the best year we've ever had, uh -huh. and then things took a turn for the worst, and we're like, we're just gonna lose everything, and we didn't quite lose everything, but it wasn't great, but it wasn't as bad as it could have been. Uh -huh. So I guess you could say that watermelons are resilient. They fought through the drought and ended up producing some watermelons, but not near as many as they would have in more ideal temperatures. Uh -huh. So we had way too much rain early on, which too much rain for a watermelon is not good, especially early on, because apparently when a watermelon is just you know, growing, their root will only go as far down into the ground um, as it needs to go to get moisture. Mm -hmm. So if the ground stays wet, the root is not going to go very deep. Interesting. And then Very when much. it turns off dry, that root's not going to go down anymore. Got it. So, so it's, it's going like to stay right it's, there. You got to have like the perfect amount of like yeah, not well, too much water, but it has to have enough water at the same time. They can hand they yeah, yeah. but what what in our case so it was really wet so they were they took off and they were growing beautifully because of how wet it was it stayed wet it stayed wet, um, lots of rain and then when it turned dry they had actually already started producing watermelons so when it turned off dry and we went into like a, a period of drought the watermelons they had already on their vines they're trying to feed them but they're also trying to go and get water yeah. uh -huh. so it's just causing so much stress from a, a lot of different angles so what right. they did was they just they just stopped they're like okay what we have is what we have we're not putting on anymore uh -huh. so it was um it was tough like yeah we literally worked half days like we didn't have very many watermelons at all um, and they weren't as big as they normally are just because of the drier conditions and the drought. Um, so yeah, I think we went, like I flew in on, I think the end of June and the rain had stopped about a week before I got there and it was supposed to keep raining after I got there. And it, we went two, like I think maybe eight or nine weeks without rain and just hot. Like it went from like being like high 80s to like 100, 105, 110, just straight through. And it was just, it was brutal. It was. Yeah, you were there. I did go there. Uh, and let's talk, actually, yeah, let's talk about that really quick. Um, be honest. Am I not the best watermelon thrower you've ever seen in your life? Let's be honest. I can chuck those watermelons so hard. Yeah, but you like, you miss them on the ground. Well, that's because I'm not a professional watermelon picker. <laughs> 
Obviously. You don't have to be. They're lit- I literally roll them <laughs> up, roll them up for you to see. So this is so this is how really quick. Like uh, so, Ashton's job on the farm, primarily during the watermelon season, is to cut the watermelons off of the vine. Cut the ripe ones cuts off. Cut the right, cut the ripe ones because there's a certain way that you have to do it. Um, you know, and her dad says that she's the best in the business. <laughs> <laughs> best watermelon cutter in the business, right there. <laughs> <laughs> and what you got there on was it, were we're on the news? Was that how long was that like four years ago? Yeah, that was right after I moved. You guys away. were on the news. Mm-hmm. Uh and uh so that's so she you'll cut like what, like thousand or so watermelons every morning, right? No, it that'll be like the day, the whole day that I cut will be around a thousand. And then the people on the the farm hands, like myself that I was when I was there for those few days, mm-hmm. um, will come along and pick the melons up off the that I've already cut yeah. and rolled over belly up. Whatever, yeah, uh, and then throw them into the truck and load them, and then we load them to other people and whatever, right? Uh-huh. Yeah, uh, and I can tell you as being someone that talks about working out all the time, like on this podcast, um, I do not enjoy uh, doing that kind of manual labor for that long. <laughs> but you did say that you were in the best shape of your oh, life. Oh no, when I came back, when I came back from how long was I there? Like you were there I just was like, two weeks. Not even two, almost two weeks. Yeah, you flew I feel in like, like I flew on in on Wednesday. Wednesday night. The wedding was on a Thursday. Haha, <laughs> great bit I have now about the wedding. When, uh, you flew on a Wednesday. And then I left that Sunday. You were there the following So like 10 week. days. Yeah, 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 10 days. Um, yeah, like I lost, I didn't lose any weight necessarily, but like I was definitely more defined in that 10 weeks, in that 10, <laughs> in that 10 days than I ten was weeks. like before. And like before I got there, like, I mean, obviously I'm in good shape, you know, you mm-hmm. see me without a shirt on sometimes, right? Um, and, but yeah, like I was like, I just felt more jacked when I came back from just, you know, throwing those watermelons the whole time. Mm-hmm. It was crazy. I did not like it though. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I always get in the best shape when I'm there too. Yeah. Doing watermelon. It's just, you're burning so many calories. Yeah. I was like, killing it on my Fitbit. I think I was burning like at least 3000 calories a day. I was up over 4,000 every day. Yeah. Easily. I mean, if you're throwing them, yeah. you know, but I'm like walking, I think I walk anywhere from Ten miles every eight day. to five. Yeah, yeah, eight to twelve miles a day in the sand. Yeah, so it's not like just well, it's all, yeah, that, and that's the thing too. It's in and that's the why sand. I can't see the watermelons because sometimes they're covered in like sand and vine. No, they're not. And like I no, can't tell. No, they're not. I, if you're not a professional, no, you don't know what you're looking for sometimes, and it's just easy. They kind of, they get camouflaged in no, the sand they don't. sometimes in the green. Yeah, they do. Okay, so anyway, uh, <laughs> I, I know people will always ask this, and I, I don't think we covered it the last time you were here. And I, you know, people always ask us when we're somewhere and we. You know, we tell them who you are. Uh, they want to know, A, what it's like being a comedian. and But, uh, but they always want to ask you, uh, how do you pick the perfect watermelon? And that's a question you always get asked. Because, like, you will, like, go, we'll go to the store, and you'll do, like, you'll smell it. And so, I do not smell it. Okay, well, anyway. the cantaloupe, I will smell it. Oh, yeah, the cantaloupe. cantaloupe you smell. Yes. Right, okay. So if, if people are listening right now, and they want to know, how do I pick the perfect watermelon? Um, first off. I recommend it be local. Okay. So even if you are going to like your grocery store or um, the farmer's market, the first thing is I want it to be local. Um, so usually if it's at the grocery store, it'll say on that little label or tag, it'll say like um, USA or uh-huh. it'll say produce product of Mexico or Guatemala or Honduras. Um, I prefer it to be local. Um, Do me a favor. When you pronounce the Latin American countries, I would like for you to use the proper pronunciation. Oh, I'm sorry. Mexico, Honduras. No. <laughs> 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 um, anyways, and the reason why I prefer local is because if it's not local, it's traveling like several miles. And if it's going to be traveling several miles, the the company or the farm that's picking this these watermelons that are going to have a greater distance to travel they're going to cut them um not when they're ripe uh-huh. so they're going to cut them when they're greener so like like premature premature they're going to cut uh-huh. them premature so that way on the on the way over they don't like get overripe um but when they cut them premature um the watermelon will never get any sweeter so it'll mm. it won't be very sweet it will continue to get like more red or more um, more of a color on the inside, whether it's red or orange or yellow or whatever color it is, but it won't get any sweeter. So once it's cut off of the vine, it's done um, done growing. So that's why I always prefer to have you know a num- your number one 
Um, so they cut them early so that by the time they go to where they're going, they can be f- like ripe by the time they get there. Is what you're saying? Well, y- they won't necessarily be ripe. A lot of them that I've had, even just locally here, like even sometimes I think, you know, it's coming out of, it's coming from Mexico. Mexico's not that far away. Maybe it'll be, it'll be decent. And it's really not. It looks like it might be. So you don't like Mexican watermelons? Well. What do you have against Mexican? Nothing. But <laughs> I'm just saying that they cut them early. So that way in route to wherever they're going, they don't get overripe and get Got mushy. It. Right. The riper watermelon gets, the mushier it's going to start to get on the inside and mm-hmm. on the outside as well. Right. Um, so they just cut them early. And, because the consumer doesn't know any different. Most consumers won't know any different. Um, so that's one, one thing I look for is the watermelon being local. The second thing is there's so many varieties of watermelons. It's, this is kind of gets kind of tricky. But um, for your striped varieties, you want your stripes to have kind of stretched kind of like stretch marks you want them I don't, you want them to fade i'm not a fan of stretch marks <laughs> <laughs> you want the watermelon to be kind of faded I get what you're saying, though, yeah. and you want the the lighter stripes to have kind of just stretched out as like the watermelon itself was growing so uh-huh. those stripes are very um small and parallel when the watermelon's young as the watermelon gets older and it grows and gets bigger the stripes start to like expand and stretch out so you want your the stripes to be kind of stretched out the watermelon to be kind of faded and then the number one thing i look for in the in finding a watermelon like at the store there'll be watermelons that'll have like what look like boogers on them Uh and like little brown it's like almost like a syrup like like a hardened syrup or something like that on the outside Uh those are actually just like sugar beads Mm -hmm. so they have they have like leaked out from either a cut in the watermelon that's healed over when it was young or when it was cut off of the stem they will have leaked out that way that's a good indication that a watermelon is going to be sweet got um, it if it's got the sugar beads you know what we'll, we'll do is uh when we upload this episode um, I'll accompany it. And I'll you know what? Co- ac- what was that word? <laughs> <laughs> accompany uh, the episode. We'll put some pictures of like ripe watermelons and my story or your story, so people can see like what we're talking about. Because um, it's obviously I don't know. Uh, we've been together for four years now, <laughs> and I have no idea how to pick a melon. I just let you do it. <laughs> but um, it's also like it's it it's weird like here seeing like because you know being on the farm for a few days and then seeing like how you, you guys sell them wholesale to people how cheap they are and then you come like to the store here and you're paying like three times as much money like it just hurts my heart it's like no those things sell for like those are, like five dollar watermelons dude and they're selling them for remember i told you i had bought a watermelon that one time and i thought i thought it was like 50 cents or something, and it turned out it was like fifty cents a pound. <laughs> and I, yeah. I spent like fifteen dollars. Like, this is stupid, dude. Yeah. Yeah. It was like a thirty-pound watermelon. Yeah, huh? it was stupid. I was so mad. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that's 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 normally what the watermelons will sell for back home, though right. retail. But they people 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 buy them wholesale, though. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, I was going to talk about that too, though. Uh, it's when you talk about how like you pick the best melon. I thought it was always funny, like, whenever we, especially, like, when we were working the Watermelon Festival, the Rush Springs Watermelon Festival, every second uh, Saturday in August, (laughs) Uh, when people would come up to the stand and be like, "Uh, which, is it, is it, which watermelon's the best, or pick, pick me out, like, a a really good one, like, it's like, like, what do you think, I just cut some bad ones in here, too? Well, it's that, obviously, like, of course, like, we think all these are good because, you know, they're picking them. But also, like, if it was bad, we're not going to tell you that it's bad. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to be like, oh, don't pick that one. That one's crap. You're like, obviously. No, I would. Like, if one got bruised well, yeah, like, but, but, I would but we tossed, we always toss those aside. Like, yeah. if we notice that there's a dent or, or a crack or, like, yeah. sometimes the cantaloupes get, like, a little mushy. Yeah. Just, like, we toss them. So it's, like, the ones that are there, like, they're good. But, like, people will always be like, is this a good one? And you're, like, I'm not going to be like, no, it's not a good one. Don't pick that one. Like, is this the best one? Yeah. It's, it's, always, like, like, yeah. it's always like, well, when do you want to eat it? Because some of these will last a little bit longer than right. the other ones. That's how we that's how we word it in a way that's, uh-huh. like, so they kind of know, like, oh, they have a, they have a um, say in what kind of melon they're going to get. Right. Uh, t- tell them what happened uh, to, uh, we'll call it, uh, we'll call it, uh, I don't know. We we should think of a name for it, but the Black Diamond Massacre. 
this year? Oh yeah, so there, like I said earlier, there's a there's several varieties of watermelons, so and more than several. There's hundreds, probably hundreds, yeah, yeah. thousands. And uh, in our area of Oklahoma, Rush in our Springs. little region, in our little town, one of the oldest traditional watermelons that's been grown there for years and years and years, I mean mm-hmm. hundreds of years, is a watermelon called the Black Diamond Watermelon. And this watermelon is huge, huge watermelon. Um, they, they are, they're, they're huge. They're like huge pumpkins, basically. Yeah, they can get, they like you know, they pumpkins. can get 70, yeah. you know, good 70 huge. pounds. They probably don't average 70, but they would probably average 40, yeah, um, 40, 45. And last year we had a great, great crop of black diamonds that were getting there 70, 75, even maybe an 80 pounder here and there. So I'm sorry to interrupt, but think about this. So we're, we're picking up these watermelons, loading them onto the truck. And so how high would you say the truck is? Five feet, at least from the ground. Yeah, like by the top. But what? Or no, it would I'll be say, taller than that. Say, well, that's what I'm saying. From the at way least. you're chunking. Yeah, it. from where we're chucking. We're, we're so we're chucking the watermelon from ground level to you know up to to a person feet, in the trailer. To a person in the truck, like or ten feet high at least, right? Mm-hmm. And so on average, most eight, of the, yeah, the melons, 10, 15 pounds, twenty pounds. So now you're talking the black diamonds are like three, four times as heavy, and mm-hmm. people having to chuck them into the truck from. Like, people don't think about that when that, – that's one thing. It's like, you know, I, I talk about it and I joke about it and stuff. But having just, you know, every summer, you know, spending a few days on the farm, I do have more of an appreciation for, like, the people that are actually, you know, working the farms, like, at the, at the I guess, the blue-collar level where they're just literally doing manual labor, physical labor all day long because, like, chucking those 70-pound – melons like for like hours like that's crazy hey, you won't do it for an hour you'll be down the row and back and then you'll be it seems it like maybe an, an hour it may be yeah, max it seems an like hour. forever <laughs> yeah um but anyway so this black diamond variety of watermelon's been around for forever um people in our area it's almost like a it's almost like a delicacy no, it is not for sure. now because yeah. there's not many of them grown anymore and one of the reasons is because they're such an a uh, traditional um, long-standing watermelon. They have not been um, scientifically like... improved. They're uh-huh. not like a hybrid watermelon is. Isn't your hybrids are what you're going to get in the grocery store? They have been, basically, they have been. I don't, I don't know if the right word is manufactured, but right. they are able to grow in stressful conditions. They're able to handle like bad weather, and they're able to handle like funguses and and insects a lot better. Whereas the black diamond has not been messed with. Um, or scientifically improved, so it needs ideal conditions to grow. Mm -hmm. And this year, with the early rain and then the drought, we had no, we lost all of our black diamonds. It's the first time in my lifetime where I was just like, and I initially, when I went out to the field for the black diamonds, I was like, go tell me how far away you know, the black diamonds are. And I went out there and he's like, make sure they're not burning because they are, they're a very dark colored green. So they do burn. Yeah. Looks like, I mean, they like, sunburn. So we like have to dust pumpkin. them. We have to like put sunscreen on them basically. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it looks like a dark green pumpkin. Hey, how good am I at dusting watermelons, by the way? Anyways. Um, <laughs> you don't think I'm good at dusting watermelons? I think you are. You think yeah. I have a future in watermelon yeah, dusting? I think, I think so. <laughs> Um, so anyways, I would go check them and I'd be like, gosh, they just don't seem like they're growing like they should be. And they're not burning. And that's a good indication of when a watermelon starts to get ripe, it'll start to burn. And they just would not burn. And they were just kind of like at a standstill. And so like a couple weeks later, here we are like starting to get into the other, the stripe varieties. And they were all planted at the same time. And I'm like, this is odd. So I just started cutting them and I would cut one open and it would be completely white hearted on the inside, which means that it's sour. Oh, white. Yeah. So it would be at the very center of it, it would be white and then it would streak out white in the center. And so instead of being red, yeah, yeah. it would be like white, which is what they call white hearted. And it's, it's just sour. And so I'd cut another one open, same thing. And then another one, then I was like, I remember cutting 14 melons and every one of them were white hearted. And, and my dad wasn't there and I went home and I'm like, I think we lost the diamonds. And he's like, what do you mean? I'm like, they're all white hearted. And he's like, are you serious? And I was like, yeah. And so he went out the next day and he was like, yep, I think we're done in the diamonds. So, and this, not just us because of our, our region, you know, experienced the same weather conditions. All the farmers in our area lost all their black diamonds. Um, 
So yeah, it was it was a tough year for that because that's the that is the mo- the watermelon we sell the most of at, on festival day. Right. Everybody comes everyone, to Rush Springs and wanting a coming. black diamond because it's like a delicacy for our area. Everyone was showing up like you guys we have had diamonds? Black diamonds and yeah. no, we nobody had them. Um, so yeah, that was that was definitely tough, and it was it was because the black diamonds have to have ideal conditions, and we just did not have that have that this year. So they just they can't handle extreme temperatures like drought a lot of rain so Uh that's what it's a bummer that's what happened with the black diamond massacre yeah i guess with the black diamond plague i don't know yeah we should should think of a name for it and then like when we when like if we have grandkids like they could talk about the great black diamond you know tragedy of 2019 (laughs) 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 for real um yeah, I mean, like I said, it, it, de- it definitely every, I, I don't love it and I joke about it, but it definitely gives me an appreciation. You know, you think about it. I think you, you know, I know that you think about it because I know like you like going to like the farmer's markets and stuff like that. Like you love doing stuff like that. I mean, I think that comes from just your background and your appreciation of the whole thing. And I never really thought about it. And I think most people don't think about like the foods they eat, especially like fruits and vegetables. They don't think that there's a whole operation that goes into them. You know, people that work hard and people whose livelihood depends on, you know, how good these crops are. You know, it's weird. Mm-hmm. It's interesting. It's and I and honestly, and I think there's been like a transition that I've even noticed in the past few years. Like used to be, I think when you went to the farmer's market, you were getting a better deal than well, when yeah, the grocery store. It would be cheaper. Anymore. Right. Yeah, yeah. It has completely reversed. And it is because. It is now because your grocery stores are buying the cheapest product possible, so their their product is not going to be as good of of a quality uh-huh. as you will find at the farmers markets. Okay. And I've and I've noticed that, and I know it's like when I go to the farmers market, I'm like, this is so expensive. Yeah. But then when I think about it, you know, from my end and from you know having having watermelons back home, yeah, because like Kroger or Walmart is not going to pay wholesale prices at for four to five dollars per watermelon and and then try and flip them for ten dollars right they're not going to do that so they're going to buy watermelons from farther away mexico guatemala those places outsource they're going to outsource and buy them for like a dollar fifty or two dollars a melon and then bring them into their store and sell them for four and five dollars um but that's also why you're not going to be getting as good of a a good quality product Versus the products you're probably going to get at your farmer's market. And that's kind of like the same because we could probably talk about it a little bit. But um, the same way goes into like factory farming for like meats and stuff, I'm sure. Right. Like because, you know, your dad's a rancher. Mm-hmm. So he sells cattle and mm-hmm. whatnot. But a lot of these like when we go to the store and buy meat, those are for the most part factory farm meats that aren't. I don't know if it's not as good for you, but. They're cheaper, so you know they're, the animals there are probably like your cows are probably taken care of really well, as opposed to like factory cows where there's just like thousands and thousands in a smaller space with no room to roam, and they're just bred specifically for that. That's like a big thing that comes up a lot. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. I have I actually never heard of that term, factory farming. Well, yeah, like foster farms or you know, Jenny O or whatever. Like those are big companies. Whereas, you know, if your dad sells a cow to somebody, that's going to well, feed Well, my dad doesn't, like, sell cows to people individually. He sells them yeah. to probably some company. I don't want to say it because, oh. you know, yeah. we're in California and people get offended. <laughs> it's okay. We have people listening that are outside California. We, we're, we're, we're not vegans here. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, our cows are, sorry, are wow. What's a cows? <laughs> it's talking about me making me make a part of the way I thought. What's a, what's a cows? <laughs> is that like a cow, a, a house for a cow? <laughs> Look at the cows over here to your left. <laughs> it's plural. <laughs> <laughs> um, our, our, um, our cows and steers and stuff, they get sold to a company that's probably going to take them and beef them up. Yeah. And like a slaughterhouse and okay. w- I mean, that stuff. I don't know the details behind it, um, but yeah, that's okay. Yeah, so I don't, I don't. All right. We get them to a certain point. We sell them. Somebody else takes them from there. Do you remember when I helped your dad deliver a baby calf? Yes, I do. 
Whatever happened to that baby calf? <laughs> was it a girl or a boy? No clue. I don't remember. Well, let's honestly. pretend it's a girl. Okay, let's pretend it's a girl. Okay, then she's hanging out at the farm somewhere. Oh, but if it's a dude. If if it was a did the baby survive first off? Yeah. It did. Okay. I'm a good I'm a good cow birther assistant. Well, um most males uh -huh. if they're not if they don't look like they're going to be like a good bull or something, then they become a they get castrated, and they become a steer. Castrated? I've seen this happen. That's and then that's the what steers. Like that's what, hold on. Get that's sold. like when your dog turns up and he's got like the the cow's the cow's the, body. The nut sack. In yes. His mouth. <laughs> <laughs> like, what does Gutter have? Like, <laughs> this is, is that, it happened more than once when I was there. Yeah. Like, so, because I I've seen it, but explain it. Like, what how they do that? So we'll, we'll, we we uh, we ban the the nuts or the balls or whatever you want to call them. We ban them. Testicles. Yeah, testicles. We ban them, and then we you just, do it. No, no, no. I don't. My dad or my sister will do it. Your sister does it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, she does You've it. You've never done it before? Mm -mm. Really? Mm -hmm. And you want to... You I stay on the other side. I hold the tail. You want to make fun of me, but you've never done it either. No. I mean, I've helped help my sister do it, but so, okay, only so one person can do it. Like, right, you don't yeah, need... Yeah. You don't, can't have... You'll get kicked. Of only one person can be down there. Right. So... But you have to put them in that, like, that little cage thingy, like in the... It's called what? a shoot. A shoot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, we band them, turn them out, doctor them, turn them out, um, and then couple weeks goes by and they start so to... So you, you, you wrap a band around the testicles. Yes. It's almost like a hair tie, like a, a tight yeah. hair tie, basically. A hair tie for your ponytail or whatever. Uh -huh. goes around their testicles. It ends up cutting the circulation off over time. And then they, and just, then, fall and they just fall off after a couple weeks. It's crazy. It's, it's, I think it's, it's easier on the animal than us cutting them how we used to do it. Oh. We used to have a... Oh, I don't want to hear this. Yeah. You used to cut them? Yeah. Like with like a blade? Yes. Oh, God. Mm hmm Oh, did that just hurt? Well, that's how Everybody you have listening? to, if you want to eat calf fries, that's the way you do it. I've it's, never eaten calf fries, yeah, and I don't so think I'm ever going to. I remember my dad would, in, calf fries are better when they're like younger, younger, not like they get, you could not, as they get older, they Explain to people good. what calf fries are, because most cow people. Ball. It's It's balls. <laughs> cow testicles. Yeah. And fried? So, yes, deep you fried. You fry them. Yes. And so he would cut the cut the sack off, and then he just pulled them out, pull them <laughs> out, and then toss them into the five gallon bucket of water over there. And he'd have to be like, tell Gunner not to get in them, because right. Gunner would be trying to get in them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Have you ever had calf fries, Paul? No, no Paul's never had calf fries. I never. I mean, had they any. have lamb fries too. Uh, never. Ugh. But. The, the, the I think they call them something else in other parts, like I'm sure. mountain oysters. I think I've heard oh, that term, something like that. Mountain oysters. Oh, really? Yeah. Rocky Mountain Oysters. Yeah. Look at that, Paul. Good mm -hmm. for you, buddy. Have you had those? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I haven't had them since I was probably in middle school or younger. It's that My dad got tired of doing that because that's a lot of work. Yeah. I just remember your dog coming up with like, we're like, what is that? You're like, oh, that's a cow's balls. Like, <laughs> it's just so weird. So so they do that to the, the males. Mm -hmm. And then what? They just roam around not producing? Yeah. So they, they become a steer instead of a bull. And what is that? And then what does that mean? Because I honestly, I think a lot of people well, that, are like me. They don't know that. Your your steers and your your steers are gonna go off to get sold, to get slaughtered. Uh huh. Um, and you're gonna eat them. And also the heifers do too. Some of them do. But <laughs> oh yeah, the heifers. Yeah. <laughs> you remember when I learned what a heifer actually was? Yeah. <laughs> it's a it's a female cow that has not given birth. Yes. Yet. Correct. Yeah. Mm hmm Okay. But they're like, I don't know, they're not like babies, but they're not, they're not like old. So, um, okay, anything else you want to share about the farm? You want to, you want to explain how you ambushed me into having to deal with a guy crawling on <laughs> watermelons with no legs? That was my first, you actually experienced <laughs> it before I ever did. I did not know. OMG. Back to the watermelons. Back to the watermelons. So, like I said, we load the water, you know, we pick the well, water. Well, let's give them a backstory. So, because we lost, because all the farmers in our area lost their black diamonds, yep. there was um, there was one guy who bought watermelons off of another farmer in our town. 
but he only raised black diamonds. So he lost his whole patch. Mm -hmm. So the guy then comes to us. They they send him over to us to get stripes. Uh -huh. And the guy shows up and... Okay, so, okay, so this is, I'm telling, you guys, this is actually what happened, okay? So, like I said, we walk around, we pick up the watermelons, we load them in the truck, and then we bring the truck back with, like, four or five hundred or more watermelons stacked on it, and then we start loading them onto other trucks, yes? Yes, onto the people who are buying them. So, us. there's a guy in the truck, and usually there's, like, you know, three or four of us involved in, like, the moving of the watermelons, you know, shifting them from one truck because they're kind of heavy and it just gets, you get tired. So usually there's someone in the truck picking the watermelons up. Usually there's someone in the middle in keeping between the, in the, between the two trucks keeping count. And then there's someone inside the truck that we're putting the watermelons in, stacking them so that they don't break and stuff. Um, and, you know, maybe this guy ordered like 100 watermelons, right? So this guy's in a truck, okay? And he drives up in his truck and, you know, he's, he orders 100 or whatever. So we're stacking them. And then as we're about done, he notices that, you know, there's still quite a bit of room in his truck. So he wants to add another 50 watermelons. But we have another truck waiting, so we kind of have to hurry up. We weren't expecting, you know, to make this guy wait. So he's like, I'll get out of the truck and help you. And the guy gets out of the driver's seat, opens the door, and he has no legs. Now, my first thought is, okay, how is a guy with no legs driving a big old, you know, Ford F-150? He had some kind of big truck, yeah. huge truck. He crawls out. Of, he crawls out of the truck on his hands, climbs up the back of the bed of the truck, and I'm just freaking out like this is not happening. <laughs> like I was not expecting this at all. And like I don't know if you guys, the only the first thing that came to mind was uh, Forrest Gump, Lieutenant Dan, and how like all the scenes where he has no legs, you're just kind of looking at it like it doesn't look real. Well, when you see it in real life, it still doesn't look real. Like the guys, the guy's pants were hemmed. At like the stump, you know, and so he's crawling around on these watermelons, helping us, you know, we're, we're it's like you're throwing watermelons at this guy with no legs and he's catching them with his hands and stacking them and climbing across the watermelons. And it's like the most bizarre thing to watch. Um, and and I, text, I texted you, I was like, I was not prepared to see the guy with, I had no, not seen him with yet. no legs. He was a new customer, so yeah. I hadn't even seen it him. Was, it was interesting. But, I mean, he was there, like, almost every day yeah, getting he, watermelons. He did come back after you left, which is my first, in, which is when I met him for the first time. And he stacked his whole truck. No way. Yes, because he was shorthanded, yeah. and Sarah was there, and Sarah was struggling she was even yeah. though Sarah was stacking, she was struggling. So he just comes out. It's tiring. And he stacks his whole truck. I was just like, wow. Yeah. Like he would just climb on top of the watermelons and just. I'm like, actually, that's kind of that's kind of at least at least his back is not yeah. hurting. Yeah. Because the thing the thing is is like when you're stacking watermelons, you know, trying to make like a big, you know, you stack them in in rows of like you know three or four high or five high, maybe mm -hmm. even depending. And you know, if you push too hard on them, they'll crack. And so you have to like kind of set your footing a certain way to be able to stack and continue to stack. But this guy has no legs, so he's just stacking them with like magic, and he's floating across these melons yeah. like a gymnast on the pommel horse. And like, it's it messes with your brain a little bit, but it's also kind of amazing to watch. Yeah, like this guy with no legs is still like making a living and working his butt off. You know, mm -hmm. it was interesting. Um, okay, so we got that. That was fun. And then you came back to LA now. I did. Yeah, and it's way I'm different back. than being on the watermelon farm. Way different. Like, extremely different. Like, this, even, like, the food, your daily routine is different now. Oh, for sure. I get to eat lots of colors now. Oh, yeah, see, because it's hard to eat those. I mean, it's not hard. It's, it's not just hard. It's just not when as I'm convenient. on the farm and I'm working yeah. 10, 11, 12 hours a day, and I come home at night, it's like, I'm not going to cook anything. I'm going to bed. Uh -huh. I'm going to shower, and I'm going to go to bed, wake up, eat some eggs, and, and so you, it's you think uh, that you can eat better foods here than when you're there. It's not that it's I can eat better foods here. It 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 is that I can probably eat fresher foods here. Okay. Like, cause you know I think the state of or not the whole state, but like Southern California, they get two seasons on their probably fruit on their fruits and vegetables, whereas yeah, yeah. back home they just get one because it gets so cold right. and freezes. It doesn't get that cold here, so they get two seasons. So it's it's fresher fruit. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I mean, I can or fresher fruits and vegetables. I can still get the same in in Oklahoma. It's probably not going to be as fresh or as good. Like I did get avocados at the store in Oklahoma, and they were not good at 
fall. Yeah, I can imagine because it was where like, do they grow? They have to import them from California. Oh yeah, or Mexico. Or Mexico. Yeah, they were not good. They were so mushy, and I, I had a thumb away. I was like, this is gross. But yeah, so it's more or less I have the time here to right. to get those foods and prep and and make the meals. Whereas when I'm in Oklahoma, I'm like I'm ordering a salad at the diner for lunch, uh-huh. and then eating probably leftover barbecue for dinner. I mean, that sounds like the life to me. Yeah, but then after a <laughs> while, your body's like, I need something green. Right. Like, can I get like something like green or, yeah, I did. I did. There was a time when I was just like, I can just tell my body was just wanting some nutrients that I wasn't giving it. Uh-huh. And uh, that was. But it's uh, crazy because when you're in Oklahoma, you probably burn more calories. And oh, yeah, for sure. You're probably sure. in the best shape. I'm in the best shape. Than when you're here, mm-hmm. even though there's access to better foods here. And that's just because you're moving more. I'm working. So yeah. that's a secret. If you move more, you burn more calories. That's not rocket science. That's mm-hmm. just science, period. Um, but since you're here, now you've discovered, you know, you have. And it's only for that, that harvest period that right. it's like that. If I'm not in harvest, then there is more time to. To prep, but usually I just go home for harvest, and so as soon as yeah. that, the plane hits the ground, like it's like your dad. Your dad's like, "What time? Like, you, what time is your plane landing tomorrow? Seven a.m. All right, I need you to pick up something at eight. <laughs> 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 like, just get to work, dude. I don't yeah. like that at all. Yeah. Like when I flew in, the, 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 I flew in Wednesday night, like late, and you were like, uh, "Okay." Your sister's wedding was on Thursday. I didn't even come and pick you up. You didn't even that's pick me up. That's how late you were coming. I was like, I, was, I have to get sleep because I have to be at work in the were. morning. But yes. you were also like, uh, I know your flight gets in or whatever, but you got to wake up at 6 a.m. tomorrow because we need your help. And I'm like, are you serious, dude? Like, this is dumb. I don't like this at all. <laughs> uh, but now that you're here, I'm glad yeah, we, we, this is kind of on the, on the same subject, but you've kind of gotten into like uh, – I don't want to say juicing, but definitely no, not like juicing. not juicing, mm-hmm. but like definitely making like your own type of like like almond milk and yes, and, and it's something I've been wanting to do for several years. Ever since I was first um, when I initially moved out here, I started following some like health food health food accounts on social media, and um, they always talked about this Vitamix and how amazing this Vitamix blender is. And I I looked at it and I was like, oh my gosh, I want one, but it's like $500. And I just could not, could not pull the trigger on ever getting one. And when I got back, this was my goal. When I got back this year, um, when I got back this summer, I was like, I'm going to get a Vitamix. And I did. So I got a Vitamix and I'm like, if if I'm spending, and it wasn't like a brand new one. It was like a a uh, refurbished Vitamix, so it wasn't quite... You got a refurbished Vitamix? Yes. It wasn't $500, but it was like at least $350 for Wait, a you, refurbished blender. You spent how much on the Vitamix? It was like at least $300. Are you serious? Yes. It came with a five-year warranty, but I'm like, if I'm going to invest in this blender, I am going to use it all the time. And I have been. Hold on. I just want everyone... It is the best blender ever. I just want everyone listening in Oklahoma to hear that you just spent $350 on a blender. <laughs> That's funny, dude. It's amazing. Uh-huh. I mean, it is so worth it. Like I, I had, and it, it's not like it was my first blender. I've had, I've used my sister's blender at the house. Um, <coughs> had like a, wouldn't I think a she ninja? had like, yeah, she has an, uh, an ha- you have? I had a ninja yeah, sorry, and my sorry. sister has a ninja back home and it was like a higher, okay. like a higher powered ninja or whatever. And like her, powered by God? No, like I don't know the the motor or something. I I'm don't killing know. it with Paul over here. These jokes are all flying over your head. Anyways, so <laughs> my blender had had definitely worn out, and even before it wor- was worn out, I couldn't even make a lot of shakes with like a lot of heavy mm-hmm. stuff in it. Like it, it would just the motor would just quit running. It's yeah, like yeah. Mmm. I broke I broke Michelle's magic bullet when we lived together. Yeah. So anyways, <laughs> so I finally pulled the plug on this. I got this amazing refurbished. Uh-huh. Vitamix and I love it. So now I'm using it almost every day and I'm making smoothies and I'm making my own almond milk and cashew milk and I want to make almond butter and cashew butter but I haven't gotten that far because I just You're making your I own almond it. milk and cashew milk. Uh-huh. Yeah. Almond milk and cashew milk and then usually I'm putting using it um in in my smoothies or I'll put the I make I've been making a lot of overnight oats. Mm-hmm. It's I I found that the overnight oats is such a good pre-workout meal. For sure. 
and I, it so. gives me it actually gives me a lot of energy. Yeah, absolutely. That's and I feel really good. I always tell you, like, or I tell my clients or whoever, like, they're like, "What do you eat every morning?" And I'm like, "It depends on if I'm working out or if I'm not working out. Like, if I'm not working out, you know, I eat my eggs, my bacon, have my coffee. That's my breakfast. But if I'm going to work out in the morning, I have oatmeal because that's a great. It's a it's it's a it's a carbohydrate that it's not a cheap. It's a complex carb, mm-hmm. so it's going to stay with you. And it, it's going to help you burn. I get that, but know. just oatmeal to me is boring. It's just yeah, boring. Sure. That's why I like to. I my go to breakfast every morning, even when I'm working out, is like I'm le- like eggs and spinach, yeah. and if I have like black beans or quinoa, I'll mix that in there. Mushrooms, mix those in there. Bell peppers, mix those in there. But if I'm working out, then I'll have I'll have a, a slice of toast oh, with yeah. some peanut butter or avocado on it. If not, I just have the the, the egg scramble is what I like to call it. Uh-huh. Um, but the overnight oats, I can get more variety with them because yeah. A, the, the milk gives them like a, and I'm sure it would be the same if you warmed them up with milk, but the milk gives them like a creamy texture. Uh-huh. And then I can add like fruit or so chia my, seeds. My dad could probably eat it then, huh? Maybe <laughs> fruit or chia seeds and hemp seeds and granola and... I can just, I can like fix it up to where it's not boring for me. Uh huh. So. So you like it now? I love so it. Do you, you, would you advise people to invest in a Vitamix? Yeah. Or maybe like, there's also another blender that I hear is really good. It's a Blendtec. It's also just as somewhat uh-huh. expensive, at least probably $200. And I hear great things about that one. Um, it's just everybody that I followed on social media and even the girls that I work with have a Vitamix and everybody just raves about it. So I was okay. like, I really want to get a Vitamix and I did. And we've been having like, I've been making some really good smoothies with it. Like, yeah. and not like liquidy smoothies, like almost like ice cream so smoothies. almost like you have to, you have to, almost have to eat, eat it with, it with a, a spoon. spoon. You, and I like that because it's more yeah. texture. It's so I think kind of like an it, acai bowl, but without all the sugar. Yeah, so I'm not adding any sugar. It's just yeah. it's just frozen fruits or frozen vegetables, um, like protein. Yeah, like or your collagen. yeah. I've been using lots of collagen protein um, to get to make it to have. To now give it explain because you were telling me about this, and I know it's be- it's oh like God. a craze. But the collagen protein is good for like your skin and your nails and yeah. Stuff like that. I mean, like I don't honestly, I don't know. I'm not like I'm telling you. Yeah, I'm <laughs> not like. I don't know a lot of scientific There's, facts it, it, gr- about they're it. Very pop- it's very popular with girls because the collagen is good for like your skin. I ju- your yes, because as you get older, I yeah. know that you lose collagen, yeah, which yeah. is what I think makes your – collagen keeps your skin like yeah. tight yeah, yeah. and like a, so it makes your skin sag. As you get older, you're losing collagen. You lose uh-huh. that elasticity in your skin. So, I mean, collagen has lots and lots of benefits. Um, even when I'm back home in the watermelons, I take collagen supplements uh-huh. and it has helped. There's different types of collagen right, of and the type that I take back home is specifically for your bones and your joints. And it has helped with, you know, I've had several knee surgeries and it's, it helps the, the joints in, in and around my knee when I'm doing all the walking, the eight to 12 miles a day right. in sand, it really like kind of helps, helps them. So I take collagen supplements when I'm. Back home. You've also gotten into like CBD too for that too. I you go did. on, and on. You go on and off. I you don't use it not. as much I just, as I do. Yeah, so. I just I have really seen the most benefits. Now I will say the CBD rub I use that a lot. Yeah. As far as like the the tincture tincture tinctures, yeah. I don't I don't do that as much. Um, yeah, I will say this, and I don't know if it's because we had ha, didn't have a great watermelon crop, and I didn't walk as much as I normally do. Like I had like hardly any pain with my knee this year. Yeah. Usually I have quite a bit of pain. I bet it's CBD helping out. I'm telling you, it works wonders. You mean you know me? You've known me. I started using CBD since you've known me. So and you've seen the difference. Like I'm not nearly as sore and stuff. But we accidentally got your dad high. On the CBD tinctures? No. <laughs> Your dad got high. No, he You were didn't. using the tinctures that had a little bit of THC in them. And I <laughs> I had brought some home. <laughs> and it was like a, uh, it was like, usually, what I usually bring home is like a three to one or a four to one ratio. Uh-huh. And so sometimes when my dad, like, he's like, comes in and his knee is like really hurting. I'd be like, just take, just take a a dropper of this and it'll be okay well this time i brought home a one-to-one <laughs> and he was just assuming it was like the same because i keep them all in the same spot and so here he comes in and he's like 
been working all day and his he's you know his knees killing him so he takes one goes back outside and works for a couple more hours he comes back in his knees still hurting so he takes another one and i wasn't around for all this and then i come in later and he's like sitting in the chair and he's like do those do those do those drops mess with your heart <laughs> And I'm like, no. And it didn't dawn on me then, but then I texted Peter. And you I'm texted like, me. I'm like, your I'm dad's like, hey. high, dude. I'm like, those drops don't mess with your heart, do they? Because then I started getting worried. <laughs> <laughs> and then Peter's like, no, but they do make you think your heart's like beating yeah, rapidly. Yeah, it's, it's, it's marijuana. But my dad was like, my heart's beating really fast. <laughs> and he was just like sitting there in the chair with his eyes closed. like. And I'm like, and I was like, oh my gosh, something's wrong with my dad. Yeah. That's how, that's, remember how, how it happened? Because, okay, so you started using, because I've been using CBD for a couple years now, probably, mm -hmm. I guess. And you had started using the uh, the ones that had TH, because I, I initially just was doing CBD, CBD, but you were doing the, the you know, the ratio. You know, they four say to it one. works better. Yeah, yeah, and it does. It works and, better And together. I've since started to use, you know, marijuana and CBD in conjunction with one another, but... I had taken some of your drops not knowing that they had THC, and then I got on the plane that one time, and I woke up, and same thing. My heart was racing, and I thought I was going to die, <laughs> and I didn't realize I was high, and I, like, I just felt like I was having a heart attack, and mm -hmm. I wanted, my first thought was, like, I need to tell the flight attendant that I'm having, like, a heart attack or something, <laughs> and then, I, and then my, my brain kind of started to rationalize, and I had the, 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 the I don't know what... Mentality? I, just not, I, in my mind, like I was in, I was, I was uh, coherent enough to think for a second, rationalize what was going on, look at my Fitbit that had my heart rate monitor on oh. it, and then I, I saw that my heart was normal, and then I was like, oh, I'm just high right now, yeah. and then I just went back to sleep. My dad loves the 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 rub on. Yeah, he likes some of them the, feel he great. Likes it's like the, icy hot, but like not the as, lotion. I guess. Yeah. He does like that one. Yeah. So. I feel like more and more people now are, you know, especially like, like let's say, like people for, in Oklahoma that might have been like anti-marijuana initially, um, once they start to actually learn the benefits and experience the benefits, like they're like, oh, like, like let's say example, like um, obviously your family's super conservative, right? So, well, yeah, but some people in my family are all for the medical. Of course, some, some people. They want the medical, right. not the recreational. Of course, but that's what I'm saying. But like, I think before a lot of people in those parts might have been just completely anti, but like, like mm -hmm. you said, like, you know, your family's, your family's conservative, you know? Um, but then when your cousin had, uh, had cancer, that was like something that she had to start using. What was your cousin that died? Kenzie. Kenzie. Didn't you say that she, I don't think so. Yeah. She, you told me that. Maybe. I don't, I don't remember. And it helped her because she, this. it was like one of the first things that, like, it was, like, one of the only things that helped her not have pain. Oh, really? I don't remember this at all. Okay. I have a better memory than you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, someone, I don't have a very good memory. Someone's been doing a little bit too much <laughs> marijuana supplementation. No, I do know, apparently, with my roommate. Yeah. Um, you know, she she does the all the medical marijuana oh. stuff. I was like, what roommate? <laughs> oh, that one. <laughs> um, okay. So, that's cool. We can talk about this now. Um, I, wa I want people to hear about this. So uh, I think, like, as a comedian, um, I share a lot of, like, my highlights, you know. With, and I think that's everyone with social media, like, we share highlights. Um, but you're probably the person that has to deal with my lowlights the most. <laughs> like, you're, you're, a lot, you're my confidant, you know. Like, if I have a bad show or I come home or... If I'm not, like, if something happens, I have a bad audition or, like, whatever it is, like, you see a lot of, like, the negative side of my comedy career. Um, how does that make you feel when you see me going through struggles like that? Sometimes I just want to laugh. <laughs> okay. Why? Well, I guess it's just because I grew up very differently. Of course. Than you. And so sometimes it's, like, when you struggle or when you have like you say like a like something bad happens like audition bad show or whatever you just kind of close off and kind of get down and and just kind of like 
just in your own like I don't know mind or whatever and yeah. and for me it's just like okay like we just got to keep going like we don't have to, I don't have time to to just shut down in in I don't know what you do think about it or whatever like there's just stuff that has to be done and like I don't have that time to do that so that's what I think is it's kind of funny to me because you'll just like just shut down sometimes uh-huh. you think so. that's funny kind of that I become emotionally unavailable yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you see like I mean could you see like the highs behind the scenes but you see the lows um, you see the like okay, I slept in the car last night, like, kind of things. Like, you see all those things. Oh, I've been there. Yeah. And I've slept in plenty of cars. Yeah, see, that's... Maybe you not plenty. You were the one that were like that was like, yeah, just sleep in the car, big deal. And I was like, what, yeah. dude? <laughs> like, yeah, just sleep in the car. I mean, but your dad we used to sleep in the car all the time. Your dad Ryan. used to be a trucker, though, so that's, like, normal for him. Yeah, but even when, we, we, even when he wasn't a trucker, we just... It's, yeah. it's just because it's like, you know, we'd be going somewhere and... It just wasn't worth it. It's just cheaper. Yeah, and it wasn't yeah. worth it. Like, you're going to be there just to sleep. Right. So why spend that, you know, 70-ish dollars yeah. if you're just, you know. N- I think now that, you know, he's gotten older, he, like, probably enjoys, like, a hotel bed a little For bit sure. more, than more than sleeping. More than a car. But, like, like I said, when we had to, del- to deliver watermelons to Arkansas, like, we had to be there to, you know, 8 in the morning. We didn't leave until we we do it at dark because it's easier on the tires. Uh-huh. Um, so we just stopped, slept for a couple hours, maybe not even that. Maybe just stopped, took a nap for an hour, and then just kept going, uh-huh. and then right back. So I mean, I don't know. I just. But what's it like being the 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 significant other of a comedian? Or do you not even think about it? I don't. You don't. No. Even though, like, I'm talking about you on stage <laughs> yeah. or whatever i mean it's like it it's it's cool like i guess i don't honestly it's just it's just it's just what you do it's like it's just your job yeah so it's i don't think it's any different than you being a personal trainer like it's just it's just your job uh-huh. so it, it's cool to see you get to do your job it's also i just think because like i don't think that and it, it probably says it's a testament to just how independent you are um yeah. But because I don't think everyone could date a comedian. Like m- a lot of girls or guys just couldn't do it because they don't want. I mean, obviously, like a lot of our life is or at least mine. I'm always, you know, we got to put on social media and do whatever. Mm-hmm. And like there's a certain amount of like stuff that you have to keep private. But at the same time, you got to post because of this and that. And it's like, you know, we talk about you on stage and whatever. And I think and then, you know, being me being like out all night and in a different town and just oh, all I the love it when you're <laughs> I love it when you're gone. I'm like be gone Peter, be gone. You like it. Yeah. No, you don't. Yes, I do. I like it when you're gone. I know. <laughs> but that's the thing. It's like we spend, you know, we're together, but you're gone for, you know, 3 months mm-hmm. a year basically and I'm and on the, on the road, you know, if you count up all the weekends, probably adds up to a month or two like so you know, out of the year, we might spend five months apart from each other. Like, Great. most couples couldn't do that. I know, and I like that. I think it's, is it Gwyneth Paltrow, I think, that talks about that? Like, her and her husband have separate houses. Well, they don't have anything now because they're not divorced. They are? Chris Martin, didn't they get divorced? Uh, I thought they got divorced. I don't know. I'm no? pretty sure it's her and Chris Martin? Gwyneth. Wait, maybe, maybe, maybe I'm confusing her and I Gavin. I just read this. Like maybe I, I might be confusing a couple her and with Gwen and Gavin. Yeah, I think it's... Are they still together? Gwyneth I'm sorry, Gwyneth and, and Chris Martin. I Yeah, because they live in, like, separate... They have two separate houses. On they, the, like, on the same property? I don't know if it's on the same property, but it's, like, literally within the same city, obviously. Hmm. And they, like, she'll go stay... Like, they'll stay the night with each other, like, three or four times a week, and then they... But they were talking about that, and I think it may be, like, some marriage therapist or whoever, you know, their counselor is or whoever's... I don't know what her title is, but she suggests like people do that. And she said more and more celebrities are starting to do that because they, they're just, they, you have to be your own person. I, I mean, too. I agree 100%. I just don't think that everybody can do that. Like think no. about, think about no. how many people that you know no. that yeah. have like joint social media accounts. Yeah. Like there's no way I would be able to share a social media account with like, you. Like I, when, if I ever get married, I am not taking anybody's last name. Like that's how independent I am. 
Okay, first of all, we don't need to talk about this on the air. <laughs> no, let's let's do it. Like, I'm not taking anybody's last name. And you know what? My uncle actually, my uncle was like, "Why not?" Yeah, I'm I like, don't That's care. That's old school. Like, yeah. like no, like but, I don't have. To, I have a whole life before I met you. Like, I'm course. not gonna start from scratch with another name. Like, yeah. I hate trying to find people I went to school with, and I can't because their name has changed. You don't like my last name? No, it's not that. It's just like <laughs> I like my last name. Yeah. So we, we've already had this discussion. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, I, and I've already said that as long as my son could have my last name. I, I mean, that's care. fine. Like, they're, yeah. they're starting from scratch. They can take whoever's name they want. Yeah, yeah, But, um, like, it's just, like, me, it's, like, I'm my own individual person. Like, yeah. I'm not, I'm not going to just, like, scratch that. I think that's what's, I think that's what is cool about our relationship, though, is that we both have our own, th- like, I mean, we both, like you said, come from completely different backgrounds. Um, I support what you do. Mm-hmm. Even though I don't love it, because I don't like. I guess it's kind of the same. Like when I go to Oklahoma during the summer and I have to help out on the farm, it's kind of the same thing as like we live our life and then a lot of stuff ends up in my act. So like I help you with your work, you help me with my work. Yeah. <laughs> but we both support each other, and I think mm-hmm. that's important. I mean, obviously, but I just don't think that everybody can date a comedian, guys or girls. I'm sure not everybody can date a farmer either. I think more people, I mean, before I, when I was single, I would have girls like I would meet like on dating apps and whatever. And the second I found out, they found out I was a comedian. They're like, oh, I can't date you. And maybe because part of. Because they think you're, that you're going to end up in their act. Well, they are. But like, I would always be like, dude, you're going to end up in my act anyway. So like, at no, least. No, not if you just cut it off right there. It's like, that's it. That's all you get. You're not getting any more insight into Buddy, this person. You know, some of my material. There have been some joke girls that weren't around very long that ended up in my act. I know, but if immediately from the start. Yeah. It's just funny. I think it works, though. We're not codependent. I like it. Me too. Um, do you have anything exciting coming up that you want to plug for people? Um, no, I don't think so. No. There is a lot that's going on. There's some things in the in the works, but yeah. nothing is confirmed or. Um, Paul, how come every time people come on my show, they can't talk about what they're working on? <laughs> this happened so many times. Yeah. It happened with Eric. It happened with Chris. Uh, with T. And now. Well, because it, there's like a chance, like it, something know, may I'm, I'm may kidding. get scratched know, or something. So like it's like. Okay. Yeah. So I'm just. I don't know because there is a lot going on yeah. right now. Yeah. And so something's going to happen in the next month that will probably determine, you know, what direction my path takes. Uh-huh. So, I mean, I, you could tell, I'm, I could tell them that, you know, I am going to take over the watermelons yeah, full tell time. Them, tell so them, tell them. instead of being gone three months out of the year, I'll be like six months now. I can't wait, <laughs> dude. This is great. <laughs> Yeah, you're taking over the empire. Well, it's not like completely. I'm going to be there full time so I can get ready. To I just would like for you to start branding the people on the farm like they do on that Yellowstone show. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Pete, you, you, need, yeah, you need a brand. <laughs> so if you guys, there's a show that Ashton made me start watching called Yellowstone with Kevin Costner. And it's like. It's like the Godfather, but like on a farm, basically. Yeah. Like they have the secret like group of like mafia type people that like. But not really mafia. No, but the guy killed the guy. Remember? Yeah. Spoiler I mean, alert. Kinda, yeah. Yeah. And they're yeah. like, and they're like doing like all these like businesses like deals and like trying to cut each other's land off and like it's crazy. Yeah. But like th- there's like a handful of people that have like this brand that like means like you can't mess with these guys. Yeah. So you should do that to the people on the yeah. farm. Like just start branding them. I'll get a brand. Maybe they'd stay around longer. Huh? Yeah. So as your dad brands the cows with the pea, maybe we should get something. Uh, the, the pea's so ugly, though. You got to think of something better. Like maybe like a watermelon brand or something. <laughs> That'd be awesome. No. Uh, so are you going to uh, do anything like with like a, you're going to have to, but I guess figure it out, like social media or like cool web page. They already have a page. With the, the watermelons? watermelons? Yeah. Yeah. I always, you know. I always want to do that, and then like, it's so hard when you're act- when I actually get back home and yeah. I'm working like ten, eleven. You work like too I much. don't you would need even want. To do it for you. I don't even want to be on. And I'm not when yeah. I'm home. I am not on social media very much. It's just like, 
we, me and you don't even hardly talk when we're not there. Like it's the best. Yeah, like we don't <laughs> hardly talk on the. We may talk on the phone once a week, if that. Yeah. We may text like literally. You could literally go through our thread of when I'm home. Like that's we're how te- yeah, little texting, we text. We're texting throughout the day. Don't lie. No, we're not. You're texting me all day no, long. No, I am. Yes, you are. She's such a liar. She tries to play. You guys. She texts me more when she's gone than she does. No, when she's I here. don't. Yes, you do. No, I, I know everything going on. Like, I feel like that's why I don't miss, like, I miss you when you're gone. But, like, when I tell you what I'm doing, you're like, yeah, no. yeah like, I know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, uh, I have to plug some things. By the way, uh, if you like this podcast, please uh, rate it on iTunes or is it, it's called Apple Podcast now, I think, right? Um, rate it, share it, subscribe if you want to hear these episodes weekly. Um, follow, I'm, I'm going to post some pictures of like the watermelons so you guys can know what's ripe and whatnot. Um, I'm going to be, uh, this week, I'm going to be Thursday night. I'm headlining Bonkers Comedy Club in Vegas, and I've never been there, so I don't know what to expect. Hopefully it goes better than this last weekend of my work. Um, and then I have something else coming up, but I can't think of off the top of my, oh, uh, this is like a month down the line, but I'm going to be in Chicago at Zany's Comedy Club, November 14th through 17th. Um, and I've never been there, so I've, I've been to Chicago, but not to Zany. So I'm very excited because that's a very old club, and I'm excited to be a part of the history of that place. So, uh, you know, if you're not following me on social media, which I don't know why you would be listening to this if you weren't, but maybe you're a fan of Ashton's, follow me at Peter Sirs. They can find you on Instagram. Uh, My first and last name, Ashton Pittman. Ashton Pittman. And, and it's not changing. And that's not changing. <laughs> and then your Twitter is something different, though. Uh... Ashton underscore Pittman. Yeah, because there's another Ashton but Pittman. I, I'm not like a tweeter. Yeah, you don't tweet her. She only tweets when she's mad at me about something, and then she'll tweet like... No, I've gotten a lot better at that. You have. I have. But... I, it's funny because I'll start to tweet. I'll start, and I'll just like, don't do I it. I always know when we get into a fight to go on Twitter and see how <laughs> mad you are. And if you don't tweet something, then I'm like, okay, she's not that mad. Well, then I'm going to have to start <laughs> tweeting again, all right. <laughs> uh, anyway, guys, thank you so much for listening. Um, follow Ashton, follow me, listen, whatever, um, and come see a live comedy show and support local farm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Support local support farmers. Local. Um, thanks for listening. This has been the camera at 10 pounds. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.